Good morning and welcome. In the name of our risen Lord, welcome to this Trinity Lutheran London worship for March 29th, the fifth Sunday in Lent. This is Nancy Majuli. In times like this, faith is more important than ever before. So keep the faith. This too shall pass. The words for worship will be on the screen so you can respond and sing along. Come, let us worship our God together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have Our mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned away from, from you. Knowing only me and I only. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and great spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who was the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Almighty God, 
Your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, has spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, reading from the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not with them. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going to go there to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. 
Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Take away the stone. Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for days. But I did not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of the God. So they took away the stone. Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. Some pastors I know like to start every sermon with a joke, and, well, that's not my style, but today you're going to get a joke. Because a well-told joke will weave a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it'll bring it all together. A really memorable joke will build up the audience's expectation and then surprise them at the end. Here's an example. A magician was working on a cruise ship in the Caribbean. The audience was different each week, so he did the same tricks over and over. The problem was the captain's parrot saw all the shows and began to understand how the magician did every trick. And the parrot would start shouting in the middle of the show, Look, it's not the same hat! Can't you see he's hiding the flowers under the table? And hey, why are all the cards the ace of spades? The magician was furious, but this was the captain's parrot, so he could do nothing. And then one day during the magician's act, the ship hit a rock and sank. The magician found himself floating on a piece of wood with the parrot. They glared at each other, but wouldn't speak. They said nothing. And finally, after three days, the parrot said, Okay, I give up. Where's the boat? Our gospel story for today has three sections. Like the joke, this story first sets up the scene. Then it moves the story along towards a certain direction. And then finally, it does a twist. The three sections aren't the beginning, the middle, and the end. But if we listen carefully to the conversation that Jesus had with Mary and Martha, we hear the first scene or the first section is the heartache. The second section is the miracle. And the third section, well, we'll get there in a moment. So the heartache, this is Jesus feeling heartache, and not just him, but everyone around them at the loss of Lazarus. Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. 
shortest verse in the Bible, two words, Jesus wept. You can hear the heartache through all of this part of the story. This isn't the first time that God or God's son even has had heartache. I think about the time when Adam and Eve don't do what they're supposed to do. God gives them one command and, and what do they do? They do the thing they weren't supposed to and God kicks them out of the garden. This was supposed to be good. This was a good place. And you got it all wrong, Adam. You got it all wrong, Eve. And things get worse. And God is sorry that he'd made people at all. And he sends the big flood. One of the other places that I hear great heartache is in the Gospel of Luke. And this is after the resurrection when Jesus catches up with the, the two disciples who were walking on their way to Emmaus. And they say to him, we had hoped. They had hoped that this Jesus would be the Messiah, not realizing that this was the very Jesus right beside them. But those words, we had hoped. And now it's all gone. That's heartache. In this story, the middle section is the miracle. Jesus calls out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. This is one of the last stories we get before Jesus ends up at the Last Supper and then ends up on the cross and we know that part of the story. But here, this miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus. He's raised him and now he says, come out. There's the miracle that happened. And everyone around him was saying, no, this can't be. That The grave, is, it's, it's been four days, no. And Lazarus comes out. But here's the third section, the twist, if you will. When Lazarus comes out, he comes out and he's still bound by the funeral clothing, cloth around him, cloth around his head. And Jesus says to the people around them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Some translations will say, unbind him, let him go. So how is that a twist? Well, you've seen this amazing miracle. Lazarus got raised from the dead and came out of the tomb. And here, Jesus is calling the people around him to engage. He's inviting them into the ministry that he's here for. So the third section, then, is invitation. So we have three sections in this gospel story today. We have the heartache. We have the miracle. And then we have the invitation. So how does that play out for us? Certainly at this time, when we're thinking about the COVID-19 virus and, and the world shutting down and, and everything's not the way it used to be, there's heartache stories in that. I mean, this is not the only time we've had heartache stories. Let me share a few heartache stories that I've experienced in, in these last few weeks. This last week, um, so I'm the chair of the board at St. Paul's Social Services, the Anglican Cathedral in London. And this week, we had to make the decision of stopping doing the lunch meals. The food bank still running. That was a collision of, of needs. The volunteers need to be safe. The staff need to be safe. The, the building is, is, for the most part, closed, as are most buildings and certainly all churches around. They're all closed. But yet there were people coming, looking for food. And these are people who don't have many alternatives. We've been told to wash our hands a lot, but if you live on the street, where do you wash your hands? Well, they used to use the restaurants, but they're all closed. So now what? And these people are coming and looking for help. And it broke my heart. It broke the staff's heart down at St. Paul's Social Services to say, we need to stop serving meals. And it was more for the sake of the, the volunteers so that this didn't spread further. That was a heartache. Also this last week, my middle daughter 
had a birthday. And she's in Kitchener, so we couldn't get together and celebrate. In the end, we, we drove down to Kitchener and, and brought her ukulele that she'd left back here in London. So this was to give her some joy, but as we handed over the ukulele, we had to do the six-foot virtual hug. That broke my heart, too. And my eldest daughter, too, she's disabled and lives alone and has lots of staff that come in and look after her. And I had brought groceries down to her in this last week. And she said, Dad, can I have a hug? And I couldn't. I did not want to transmit anything or I did not want to pick up anything from her environment or from the environment that I'd been exposed to. That is heartache. But there are miracles, even today. Maybe not Lazarus raising style of miracles, but there are miracles in, in many places. Shoppers Drug Mart had uh, come to St. Paul's Social Services during the week and unannounced and arrived with boxes of gloves for the volunteers and the staff so that they could carry on because they were going through their glove supply pretty darn quick. The other one was last Sunday. Trudy and I went for a walk down Piccadilly. All of a sudden, I saw these chalk drawings on the sidewalk. And then I realized there was one in front of every house on the way down. You can see them there. The first one we saw was a heart. Another one said kindness. And another one said love. Some kids had gone down and chalked the pathways up to each house along Piccadilly. That's a little miracle. Maybe you just need gospel lenses so that you can see these miracles. And another miracle was my mother-in-law, Muti. She called me up this week and, and wanted to share something with me. I need to tell you the backstory that Papa, my father-in-law, her husband of almost 60 years, died in early February. Talk about heartache everywhere. That is all heartache. But she called me up and said, Steve... I think I experienced a miracle. A few years ago, we went to a concert in New Hamburg for a choir that my sister-in-law sings in. And somebody had videoed the, the concert, at least part of it. And they were a couple of rows back. And when she was, happened to be watching this this week, and guess who she saw? She saw Papa. She saw a horse up the front. And she said to me, I think it was a miracle. I thought I would not see him again in any way until it was time for me to go to be with him. But there it was. This video, this YouTube video, warmed her heart as she saw her recently dead husband. It cheered her up. And she called me and said, it's a miracle. So I asked her if I can use it, and she said, absolutely. So what about the invitation? What are we called to? In these days, what are we called to do to help people be unbound by the things that are keeping them down? So, as Jesus asked those around him to say, Unbind Lazarus, he's inviting all of us to unbind. Maybe he invited those kids to do the chalk drawings. How can you unbind someone? Like my mother in law almost unbound herself, taking some of those bindings off. She got unbound. Maybe you can find a way to participate in, in your church life and making phone calls. We're starting a phone tree to give all the folks in Trinity a call and people have stepped forward to unbind those who are locked up and can't get out and are isolated and, and, or they're frail and, and it's dangerous for them to be out in the community. So thank you to those who are unbinding. Is there anywhere else you can find ways to unbind this world and the situation we find ourselves in. I know that Passion Sunday is coming up, so I'm going to put a request out to uh, have people help me with this, because normally on Passion Sunday, we read the Passion story, and somebody's the narrator, and somebody plays Jesus. The congregation is the other part, and they get to speak the words of the crowd. I think I always find the most moving part is when Congregation shouts out as the crowd, crucify him, crucify him. Those words end up on our lips. So if you would like to participate on that, I'll put some details up at the end of the service. So you can contact me. Go on our website and contact me there if you would like to join in doing some recording for that. 
and everybody stays in their home, just like today's service, everybody stays in their home and, and we record with cell phones and the likes. Or maybe you could share with me some of the heartaches that you've been feeling. Maybe you could share with me some of the miracles that you've seen, and not just recently in, in our locked in, isolated, closed down ways. Maybe you've already felt that invitation to be kind, to love, and to move forward, and to look after others. Or maybe even to something you would hope to be able to do. I'm going to put an email address up on the screen, and I'd like you to look at that and share that with me. And if it's okay with you, I'll record them and make a note of them. If you want to record it on your cell phone and tell me, yeah, sure, I will include your voice. And maybe that'll be the response to today's invitation is to engage in the words of Jesus and to, to engage in that story of heartache, miracle, and invitation. So I look forward to possibly hearing from you and I will put something up on YouTube. So send me stuff if, and let me know if you give me permission to share it. Or if you don't want to share it, send me the stuff anyway and I will pray for you. Maybe respond back and we can pray together so that you can share that heartache, miracle, and invitation piece that you're feeling. So may you find ways to unbind the things that are causing death. And not just physical death, but the death of well, life around us for now. Unbind the Lazarus, who's maybe your neighbor, who's maybe a friend across the country and needs some help. Let's all take up Jesus' invitation to unbind him. Amen. Together with the church around the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. You may respond to each petition with, Your mercy is great. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enliven the Church with your spirit and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, or other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation, those longing for wars to cease, those waiting for immigration paperwork, work to finalize, those seeking election, and those in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain especially those within our congregation, Ed and Doreen, Karen, Gunter, Lou, Mark and Don, Marianne Stewart, who are at home, and those close to our congregation, Deborah, Al, Jack, Steve, Richard, Frida, and Stephanie, and all those and for all those each of us names in our hearts. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, hold us tight as we do our best to deal with the coronavirus. Protect the health care workers and all people fighting this virus. Help us help one another by adhering to social distancing and not hoarding. Let us communicate with one another by using the old-fashioned method of just calling each other. Just the sound of someone's voice can be so comforting. It is the sound of knowing we are not alone. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, we give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community in caring for the needs of our neighbors. Strengthen our ties with other local congregations, agencies, and service services. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We also pray for those in the Thames ministry, especially Pastor Nadine schroeder Kranz and the people of St. Peter's, Zurich. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you 
they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones, that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to the steadfast, to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give, we give you thanks, thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray with the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine. Make his face to shine. Shine upon you. Shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. And lift up his countenance to you. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. Yeah. 
And it's time to give thanks for those who have helped with service today. To our musician, Ross McDonald, to the choir who sang the hymns, George Cooper, Janelle Lightbourne, and Trudy Johnson. Our readings today were by Vern Leffler, and then the dialogue was Heather and Jeff Holmes. Nancy Majuli did the welcome. Vivian Parker did the prayers. Look forward to being with you next week. God bless. Mm-hmm.